Here now, Mike Huckabee, former Arkansas governor and a Fox Business contributor. Governor, just your reaction hearing that. And it was a longer piece that we didn't play that had a few more gems in it. Yeah, thanks for sparing uh, your audience from the rest of it. This is just really incredible. Somehow she is triggered by the sight of pickup trucks with American flags. I've got news for her. She says she will, we ought to have this conversation. Hey, let's have one, Mara Gay, who writes for the New York Times. Here's a conversation. Why don't you take your grievances to Cuba? You won't see a lot of American flags or pickup trucks down there. I'm sure that they would welcome your views where they're probably a lot more at home than they are in most of America. This has to be, Dagan, one of the most nutty things I've heard come out of the mouth of a liberal in a long time. The only thing that's really disturbing about it is that not one person on that panel over at MSNBC, or as I like to call them, BSNBC, had even the little bit of uh, wherewithal and self-awareness to call her out and say, are you really triggered by the sight of an American flag? Well, you could hear the affirmations in the audio from one of the hosts or one of the people on the panel. And then at the end, uh, one of the hosts goes, totally agree. And, and that's where they are. I, it's, it, it's a parody uh, to quote, I, I think Megan McCain tweeted something like this. It's a parody on elitism. Like this is what, like the people, like those people are laughing stocks across the country, the flyover yeah. country, you know, <laughs> down where we're from for this very reason. And she also went into how Americanness and whiteness need to be separated. That was part of that discussion. N Dagan, I guess how it have to apologize for my whiteness if I ever met her. I would remind her of something. You know, I ran for president the same year Barack Obama did. I don't know if she knows this or not, but Barack Obama got elected by white people, starting with the very lily white state of Iowa where he won the caucuses. I, I would love to take this woman down to a NASCAR race or a Leonard Skinner concert. I mean, it would blow her head off. It would just be the most a shocking thing. I doubt she could recover from that. She would be in ther therapy for the rest of her life if she saw that there were Americans who actually listened to country music. Uh, they eat at Cracker Barrel and Waffle House. They drive trucks. They wave American flags. But you know what else they do? They love their neighbors and they don't even care what color well, they are. And quite frankly, a lot of them vote for Democrats, Governor. And that's <laughs> like the, the, there, there were plenty of uh, Obama signs where I grew up. There were uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris signs where I got uh, where yeah. I grew up. But it's this narrative that you get from like n places like New York, the, the large metropolitan areas where uh, New York City and Washington D.C. and even Los Angeles, where the flag instead of being a symbol of freedom, it's a symbol of oppression, and the person who's flying it is evil. But then freedom in general, they talk about our freedoms as if they're vile, that you know, they fundamentally want to change America into something that isn't, doesn't, doesn't hold our freedoms dear. You know, all kidding aside, I wonder how she would have felt had she gone to Arlington National Cemetery on Memorial Day, where every single grave is adorned with the United States flag. And every person there honors those who fought and died for that flag to fly freely over the rest of the country. It disturbs me that she is a New York Times editorial writer because she is reflecting in her editorials that crazy Looney Tune view. And that to me is as disturbing as the fact that she got triggered by seeing American flags. You know, I don't get triggered if I drive down the street and I see an Obama sticker or maybe more recently a Biden sticker on a vehicle. I just accept that this is America. People can vote for somebody different than me. Uh, but, but for somebody to just have a, a complete meltdown over pickup trucks and American flags, she really needs to get a grip. And real soon. More, and also disturbing was the fact that the president didn't even mention D-Day on the 77th anniversary. The vice president disturbing. did. Disturbing indeed. I, I want to say one thing before we go. I don't know if you've ever been, but the D-Day Memorial is in Bedford, Virginia, right where I grew up. 
And because uh, Bedford, there were 20 young men who died in Bedford on D-Day. I think it's the largest per capita loss for any town. It's one of the reasons it's there. Everybody should go visit. Everybody should go. It, it's uh, a powerful memorial. I've been to Normandy. I've never been so moved in my life as to stand on Omaha Beach and uh, to see where 2,500 young Americans gave up their lives trying to save the world. The good news is they did save the world, and we owe them a lot, mostly our gratitude and respect for the flag that they uh, were fighting under when they stormed those beaches. Governor, just before we go, a friend of mine, Van Colley, always, uh, you know, he posted about his father, and he said, 77 years ago on Sunday, my dad jumped out of a perfectly good airplane to rid the world of evil. <laughs> He was, he was one of thousands. Governor Huckabee, great to see you. 